Hey everybody, Sean with The Good Dog. This is going to be really quick. I've got Blue over here, and in our continuing saga of the softies, I want to follow up with him. He's seven months old, he's here for two weeks, just general obedience, puppy craziness. He's a great example of why we're not using food with every dog, or why we don't use food with every dog, and why we keep our interactions and praise in check and balance them out with appropriate interactions for the dog to get the appropriate reaction. So let's see what we can do. We're gonna be a little calm because he's super high. Blue, come. Come on, come on. Him be calm, giving him just a little bit of praise. This is probably going to go for 60 seconds, so it's okay. But uh, just giving him a little bit of praise, but I'm not being super hyped up. You'll notice. Nope. Come. 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 Nope. So you'll notice, like, as he up with the camera a little bit, thank you, otherwise, I certainly ain't. Um, You'll notice that as I interact with him, I'm trying to stay calm and cool, and when he makes mistakes, this is something I see everybody make mistakes with, they get frantic and they get worried and they start to elevate and escalate their, their intensity, their, their verbal, their nose, and that's gonna be counterproductive. It's gonna hype your dog up and it's not going to work for what you're trying to achieve, which is getting the dog to listen, not be overwhelmed, and not make mistakes. So try and keep your cool, even if your dog isn't keeping their cool especially with a rambunctious guy like this. So this guy's a smart guy, he knows all this stuff, but his head is like going a thousand miles an hour. So the last thing I wanna do is add anything to it. Hence why we're not using food, and why I'm not using excessive amounts of praise. If he was a slow pup, if he was mopey, more food, more praise, more energy. So everybody needs to learn to adjust, I'm even speaking quietly to you now. I'm, I'm training all of you. So. Everybody needs to learn to adjust instead of just being one size fits all with the dog in order to serve the dog and get the best stuff out. If you just apply, like, you gotta reward everything, you gotta use a lot of praise, and you got a maniacal, excited dog, you're gonna have hell on wheels. And if you got a really mopey dog and you're like, just being like, yeah, come, and the dog is gonna just be like, Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. so you gotta find the balance and see if you can strike the, the magic sweet spot with your dog. So we do some more work with this guy and try and kind of watch watch um, how I interact with him and how I try and stay calm and cool, hopefully, and uh, work with him as he'll probably make mistakes because he's still young and a little nutty. So, Blue, come. Come. No, come. Blue, come. Cool. You can even see like the way he like puts his body up. Like, everything's like there's no just like so he's just like a bit of a worked up young man. And you saw he made a mistake there. I corrected him. I said no. We called him back and you please raise the camera a little bit. Thank you. Otherwise, I'd start leaning down further and further. So I'm already short enough. Um, so when he made that mistake, I kept calm, repeated the command until I got him into position. I actually got closer to him, guided him away, using the collar, the command, and body motion, eye contact. I called this the tractor beam. If you don't know it, I'll do it for you right here. You're the dog, you're not listening, you're in big trouble. Instead of me getting frantic or yelling, I'm gonna move closer towards you. Francis, come here. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Francis is always my mystery dog. Um, Anyways, so that's how you pull a dog out of a situation where they're stuck, rather than just raising your voice or getting intense. If the dog is super, super rock solid and not locked up, you can dial up and repeat the command and that should also unlock the dog. But if you're in a, in a battle where the dog is not unlocking, you don't wanna just go up and up and up and just repeat and repeat and repeat. Go to the dog, press the button, do everything I just shared with you guys and unlock the dog and get the dog to work with you. You can always ask for higher compliance. <coughs> Excuse me, I get choked up with these sessions. Higher compliance down the road when the dog's in a more solid place. So let's see if we can get this guy moving around. And I'm gonna try and like keep him right in that sweet spot. He's gonna be a little goofy, but I'm gonna try and keep him in the sweet spot. Blue cup, come.
Não vai. Que foi? Não é mais. Tá. Foi assim. Tá. Você se sente nice and calm, nice and relaxed. Now, if we move this away from here, I'm going to say no and tap the button. A, a really good thing when you're working with dogs that aren't fully 100% proof, and you have to like, especially when you change over and you take your dog home from a board and train, or if you're training your dog at home, you want to really make sure that when you walk away from your dog in a position, that you keep eyes on them. If you're really watching them, then they're going to be like, I'm not moving anywhere. But you kind of want to be sly about it and just kind of walk away, keep eyes, and be ready with your no and the tap. And if you've done it right and you correct right at the right moment, the dog should move back onto place and put themselves back in position. If not, you have to take them back into position. So, now we'll see if we can move them around a little bit. Blue, come. Push one point, please. Good. Nice. So, he's kind of moving into a nice zone, which is, which is really nice for him because there's a lot of like kind of like paddling and frantic stuff that he typically gets into. And we have to be careful because he's worked a lot with Marta. And so her being close, he might want to gravitate towards her. So I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants because I haven't been very much because I've been out of town much. I could just standing on his leash. Let's see, we'll do a couple more things and then we'll uh, wrap this one up. Typical puppy stuff. No. Look up. Come on, buddy. Down. Correction. Down. That was an e color correction. You see him burst into flames. Luckily, I had a fire extinguisher. I was able to put it out as soon as he burst. So he's okay. He didn't make it. Right? Look up. Come. Go. Come. Once again, same problem spot. Come. Down. So that spot is a common problem spot for him. He's used to going over to that mat probably more than any other mat, so shows you how patterning becomes a pattern. So coming out of there to there, coming out of there and coming this way is really hard for him. So let's do it again. And even though this was supposed to be a 60 second little video, we'll have it be a little bit longer because there's some valuable stuff in here. She bears the camera, I like that, she got us up. Um, there's some valuable stuff, but I want you to see is how I would work through this problem, which is we've had a dog make two or three consecutive mistakes going to the wrong spot. Let's see if we can fix it. Blue, come. Come, come. Place. When I said no and I said place, there was a tap for each one of those. I also tapped once when I said come over here. Okay. And he's one of those guys, no. He's one of those guys, no. That because he's so excited, he does a lot of scratching and itching. You'll notice if you've got a very frantic, kind of like up, uh, edgy, uh, tightly wound dog, they tend to do a lot more scratching on the e-collar than dogs that are really relaxed and chilled out. So you also notice that when I went to recall him and I did tap the button, I also leaned down and I did more of this. A lot of times owners get stuck where they don't remember to use body language. And it's so important if you just stand here and he's not moving and you're like, come, it's really hard for the dog because he's like, well, I'm really close to you. This isn't even a recall. Of course, someone technically could be like, well, he's got two feet and he should go. It's really hard for the dog. and so. Better, are you telling me I'm going wrong? We'll get through it, it's okay, just let it roll. So anyways, when he's in that position stuck, instead of just standing there and being like, come, if the dog's like, I can't do this, bend down, eye contact, move back, call. Now, we're gonna try and work through this problem and see if we can get that right once we do, then we'll wrap it up. So I'm gonna stay closer to him rather than further away and I'm not gonna move as fast. I'm also gonna roll up a teeny bit higher from five. I'm, I'm Five now, I'm at seven to see if I can cut him off with the pass if he decides to go. Blue, come. Come. Good. Place. Down. I'm going to dial down. I didn't have to use the e collar at all, but a great example of the camera being too low for a short guy. So, um, a great example of how to problem solve. So, that time he didn't make the mistake. What did I do differently? 
I got a little smarter and I stayed closer to him and I moved slower so he didn't have as much of an opportunity to make a mistake. That's all. It's a joy. Okay. <laughs> well, we're good. Cool. Blue cup. Okay. So I'm stay closer. Okay. Come. Go. Come. Correction. Place. Done. Go back to the corner. Thanks. So one more time around the bend. I'm going to stay close to him. Dial up to seven again. Let's see what it does. Blue cup. Nice and calm. Good. Place. I didn't even need to get right on there. It was kind of me being awkward, like going on there. I could have walked over here and you would have done it. What I just did there was more of a follow command than a traditional recall command. A lot of people don't understand kind of how we've incorporated the two together, but we use recall as a follow. And it's confusing for a lot of people because they think that they should be something different. Like you should have like the a heel or something, but you can just use recall just like that and you can have the dog stay in a bubble with you, which is what I did, which is just have him move more slowly with me rather than have to travel the distance with a bigger gap between us and a bigger chance to make a mistake. So that's cool and a good problem solving um, option for you guys, mainly if you're stuck and the dog's making a mistake over and over again, back up, slow it down, figure out what you can do to try and simplify it and then repattern and then stretch it out and make it a little more complex or a little more challenging as you go through patterns or as you go through iterations of it. But like, if it's, if it's a problem, something's going wrong, slow it down, make it more simple, simplify it, and slow down your thing, check in with what you're doing, and then problem solve with the dog. So, hey, yeah, it's blue, young dude. Is he chewing that leash? No. So, it's chewing the leash like a bad dog. Yeah, he's good. So that was another correction. Everybody saw that, like an econer correction that's like, oh my God, like fear and pain. I think he's recovered. Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm being so sarcastic, but I've been through a, a dearth of e-collar madness with people. So just want to poke a little fun back. Anyways, this is Blue. He's got about another half a week to go with us. He's doing good. He's going to be a great dog. He's fun. He's a blast. And, we might even be teaching uh, out with him in the future or showing out with him in a video. So stay tuned. We'll see what goes on with that. But mainly, I want to show another softy. It's Softy Saturday.